Bless them in a special way. May they be a sign and a symbol of the love and the commitment and the generosity of those who will wear them. May they minister always to build up your kingdom and to do what is right in your sight. And may they too be used in faith and love of Jesus Christ our Lord and to his mother Mary. And I bless them all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please come forward as I call your name. Jenna G. Joey Ajib. Alex Alonso. Caroline Ball. Aiden Bowman. Natalia Kalejas. Caleb Cobb. Joseph Finizzi. Kayla Fitzgerald. Julia Jessup. Michaela Miller. Gabe Morin. Christian Niggerbaum. Sarah Newhan. Julia Leary. Noemma Pinchinot. Hannah Rankin. Jillian Remsen. Johanna Rizzo. Diego Rojas. Anissa Romelin. Olivia Scott. Nick Seringo. Peyton Springsteen. Michael Vaught. Siobhan Walsh. Lauren White. Tatum Wilmot. Leah Winsker. I ask each of you to pray for these members of our Alpha team for their spiritual strength and show your support by your applause. Thank you. Yeah, thank you to all those who are now inducted. Alpha. Thank you again for your willingness to serve, and I'd like to, at this time, before we begin our liturgy, uh, thank Mr. Gary Jello, our superintendent of schools, for his presence here and his ongoing support of all that we do here at John Ferro Catholic High School, and also for the presence and support of the principal of St. Anastasia School, Mr. Kevin Hunter. Thank you both of you for your support and for being here today. And call Nick Seringo over to, up to do our introduction.
Good morning, and welcome to today's Mass of the Holy Spirit with the Most Reverend Gerald Barbarudo, Father Brian King, Father Thomas Barrett, Father Mike Carnes, and Father Daniel Dazajaler. United in faith, we look to Jesus Christ and the Most Holy Sacrament of the Altar to provide peace and reassurance during times of turmoil and uncertainty. Although we are separated, we know that we are never alone. For, as in the promise of Christ, the Holy Spirit is with us fully alive, and leading us to communion with God. This truth alone gives us great hope. Please stand as we begin today's Mass of the Holy Spirit. Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me. Let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I'll worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. It's a great pleasure to join you here with a, a smaller group, but representing uh, John Carroll High School, and also to be with all of you by means of the uh, virtual um, uh, video this morning, so we can begin celebrating and thanking God for the gift that we have through John Carroll High School, this great gift of John Carroll High School, and the gift that we have with our faith, which unites us in a very special way at this time. So it's a pleasure to be with each and every one of you. It's a pleasure to be with the, the faculty and staff of John Carroll who love you so much and give of themselves to you in such a wonderful way each and every day, to be with your, your fine president, uh, Father Tom Barrett, uh, with Mrs. Haru, uh, with all of the, the faculty and staff that are with us today, with our superintendent of schools, Mr. Gary Jello, uh, with the principal of St. Anastasia School, who joins us, we're blessed by his presence today, uh, by my brother priest, Father Brian King, my secretary, uh, Father Michael, associate at St. Anastasia, uh, and Father Daniel ja Dalajazer, our vocation director, who is with us this morning. So a pleasure to be with, with all of you, and we give thanks to God. We give thanks to God in a very special way for our lives, for our faith, and for John Carroll High School, and for the privilege the privilege of being alive this day and of being able to be here. So we begin, as always, asking the Holy Spirit's guidance upon us during this new year 
In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that in the same spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in this consolation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, knowledge inflates with pride, but love builds up. If anyone supposes he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if one loves God, one is known by him. So about the eating of meat sacrificed to idols, we know that there is no idol in the world and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there are so-called gods in heaven and on earth, there are, to be sure, many gods and many lords. Yet for us, there is one God, the Father, from whom all things are and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things are, and through whom we exist. But not all have this knowledge. There are some who have been so used to idolatry up until now that when they eat meat sacrificed to idols, their conscience, which is weak, is defiled. Thus, through your knowledge, the weak person is brought to destruction, the brother for whom Christ died. When you sin in this way against your brothers and wound their consciences, weak as they are, you are sinning against Christ. Therefore, if food causes my brother to sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I may not cause my brother to sin. The word of the Lord. Understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest, you scrutinize with all my ways. You are familiar. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Truly, you have formed my inmost being you knit me in my mother's womb i gave you thanks that i am fearfully wonderfully made 
Wonderful are your works. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Throw me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if my way is crooked. And lead me in the way of old. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. 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 Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners. And lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great. And you will be like children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give and gifts will be given to you. A good measure packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will be in return measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Well, again, I want to express how happy I am to be with you this morning, with all of you here at John Carroll High School. As we come together, we realize that we do have a great gift in this outstanding high school of John Carroll, and that I know so many of you are, are happy to be back, and I know how much your faculty, how much your principal, your president, and all of the faculty and staff love you and want to give the best to you because you are, each and every one of you are the best. You are the best made by God and you are here today because God loves you. Now that message of God's love for you is an important one for our being here, for our being alive, for our having life, and very important for us as we begin a new school year. The readings today speak about the gift of love. In the first reading from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, St. Paul reminds the people he is speaking to of Corinth of the primacy of love. Now it's very interesting because when St. Paul is writing that letter, there were a lot of divisions, a lot of factions, present among the people. And that's what St. Paul is addressing. And he begins by telling them that knowledge, knowledge is a very important thing, very, very important thing. And how important it is for, is for us here at St. John Carroll because we are here to gain knowledge, knowledge of ourselves first and foremost, knowledge of God present in our lives, Knowledge as we continue to, to learn and to grow about others. But St. Paul tells them that over knowledge is love. And that you can have all the knowledge in the world. You can be the smartest person in the world. But unless there's a love present inside of you, love which comes from God, love which is God, then there is never going to be the harmony in our lives, the joy in our lives, the peace in our lives, that God wants us to have. And in the gospel today, Jesus speaks of that love, telling his disciples and telling the people that he's talking to that we have to love one another. And we have to have love and respect even for those who do not love us. That message is so important, so important for each and every one of us, so important for our our world and our society today. As I said, as we look around our world today, just as St. Paul saw the society he was speaking to, we see division and, and we see factions and we, and we see hatred and we see a lack of respect for other people. And we have to be very careful about that because it's easy to fall into that trap. And instead of looking at each person as a person, made in the image and likeness of God, to looking at the person in terms of who they are, what they own, what they have, what their opinions are, and losing sight of the fact that they are made in the image and likeness of God. And most important for each and every one of us is to realize that we are loved by God, that what gives us our value, which gives us our dignity, which gives us purpose and meaning in life is not how much we know, that's very important, though, to grow in knowledge. Not how much we have. God wants us to have good things and to enjoy good things and, and to use them in a wise and loving way. Very important. But that's not what gives us our identity, our possessions. What gives us our possessions, what gives us value and dignity is that we're made, each and every one of us, in the image and the likeness of God. And we have to love ourselves. Very important. We're not going to be able to love others. We're not going to be able to love God who made us unless we have a love and a respect for ourselves in the way that God has made us. Very important. God has made each and every one of us, each and every one of you, single, individually, and unique. We are not the same. He made us as individual persons. And if we don't love in the proper way and respect that person that we are, it's going to be very difficult to love and respect others and even to love God because God made us who we are. We're living, as you know, at this time with so many things going around us in a great time of fear. The coronavirus has caused a great deal of fear and uncertainty. 
And we've experienced that in the past couple of months. And you've especially experienced in people who are older than you, people who are, are, are perhaps infirm or ill in some way. There's a great deal of uncertainty that's going on and that fear is present. And that fear, as long as it is one that's coming in regard to a caution, that caution is a good thing. But fear in itself is not a good thing. Fear in itself does not help anything. Caution helps, understanding helps, but not fear. One of the most moving parts of these past couple of months was on March 27th when Pope Francis held a prayer service in Rome. And it was a rainy day, a rainy, gloomy, stormy day. And St. Peter's Square, which usually has so many thousands and thousands of people in it, was empty. And the Pope spoke in a solitary way by himself. And he spoke to all of the situation facing us in regard to the fear and the concern of the coronavirus. And the Pope urged the caution that we must have. That's why he was by himself without a crowd, as he has been for the past couple of months. That's why he was taking the necessary precautions, especially as an elderly man himself. But he spoke of the reality that fear, fear in itself was not going to help anyone. And he used the story from the Gospel of St. Mark of the disciples going with Jesus into a boat. And as they were in that boat and Jesus was teaching them, as they moved along further and further, the Lord fell asleep. And while he was sleeping, a tremendous storm came and was tossing the boat around. And the disciples naturally were petrified. They were afraid that they were going to drown. They were afraid that the boat was going to capsize. They were afraid that they were going to be blown away. And they wake up the Lord. They wake him up in the boat. Aren't you going to do something? And of course, the Lord awakens and he calms the storm by his word. But what the Lord says to the disciples are, what is needed here is faith, not fear. What is needed here is faith, not fear. The disciples knew that Jesus could calm the storm, and Jesus did calm the storm. And there was a faith that was at work there in that regard. But in all of the things that we face in life, of all the things that we face, it is our faith. It is our faith in God that makes the difference. And if we don't have that faith, if we don't have that belief in a God who created us with a purpose and a dignity, a God who created us as unique and individual, a God who created us because he loves us, because he loves us, then fear is going to take hold of us. And especially in those situations where there is need for prudence, caution, discernment, that fear is over going to overcome us. And fear many times is at the cause of what lack of respect for others is all about, as we read in the readings today. Fear many times is at the heart of what hatred is all about. We can't face other people. And so there's a hatred that develops inside people for other people, a lack of respect, a lack of trust. And we especially will be afraid during our lives of being who we are. And of all the fears that face us, perhaps the most basic one is, without us even realizing it, myself, my brother priest, all of us, all of us, no matter who we are, is sometimes without realizing it, we're afraid of ourselves. We're afraid of ourselves. You know, we're, at this time, we're, we're all wearing masks. Uh, and we're wearing masks for good reasons, in order to protect ourselves and to protect other people. But so many times in life, people wear masks without realizing it. They hide their faces. They hide their person. They put on a facade. They try to be somebody else and who they are. They try to fool others. They try to fool themselves. And it's easy for us to get caught inside of that in terms of, of wearing a mask, of wearing a facade, because we're afraid to be who we are because we don't respect it and because we think others don't respect it. And so we try to be other people, to do other, to say other things that we would normally say, to do things we wouldn't do because we're afraid of who we are. That fear inside of us lends to a disrespect for us as well as a disrespect for other people. 
Never be afraid to be the person God made you to be. Only one of you. There will never be another one of you. And as we begin this new school year, it is so good to see you enthusiastic, filled with, filled with vibrancy, looking forward to the days that are ahead. And as we face this year and face, continue to face with the coronavirus, so many uncertainties and so many fears. And as we look around our society and our country and we see it torn by fear and by hatred and by division, we realize, as Jesus tells us, that our faith, our faith makes the difference. And our faith as individuals will overcome that hatred, overcome that division, overcome that fear, because we know we are made in the image and likeness of God with a dignity, with a purpose, with a value that only comes from him. And with that before us, with that before us, we are able to move forward with a certitude that only comes from that faith. May God bless each and every one of you. You are wonderful, wonderful young people. You are the community of John Carroll High School. And may he fill you this year with the knowledge of his presence and love for you. And may he dis dispel the fears, the fears that are present inside of us and around us as we move forward this year. God bless you all. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Please stand. <laughs> With faith and confidence in God, our loving Father, we turn to him this day asking that he open our hearts to his love inside of us and remove the fears that exist in our world and also in ourselves. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For continued good health and spiritual guidance for Pope Francis, Bishop Barbarito, all bishops, priests, religious, and clarity for all those who are discerning their vocation in life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the many people on the Gulf Coast who have been affected by flooding and hardship caused by recent hurricanes and for protection from all hurricanes this season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That is Jesus laid down his life for us so we may find strength to sacrifice ourselves for others, especially the poor, the weak, the unborn, the unwanted, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who serve our country in the armed forces, law enforcement, and emergency rescue efforts, may God bless them, strengthen them, and keep them out of harm's way. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection and spiritual guidance of the faculty, staff, parents, and students of John Carroll Catholic High School during this year, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are in need of your peace and healing, especially for Finn Osking, Johanna Rizzo, Mrs. Rainus, and all those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, as we gather, we now offer you the perfect gift, the sacrifice of your son upon this altar. As you accept this gift, accept the offering of the gift of our lives which we make with him and hear the prayers and needs we confidently ask in his name, who lives with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much. Sweetest of love. 
loves, my heart becomes free, and the shame is all in love. In your presence, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place and fill the earth. And my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Sanctify, we pray, O Lord, the offerings made here, and cleanse our hearts by the light of the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all of our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the ha ha. Yes, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Gerald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. We await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us, in a, in a quiet, subtle way, just offer each other a, a sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Peace, peace. Oh. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the body of Christ. 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 The the body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.
Let us pray. May the outpouring of the Holy Spirit cleanse our hearts, O Lord, and make them fruitful by the inner sprinkling of his dew. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning once again, everyone. I wanted to take this opportunity opportunity to offer a special word of thanks to Bishop Barbarito for your presence here today, certainly, but more importantly for your ongoing love and support and guidance of our school here at John Carroll. We appreciate all that you do and the ministry that you offer and the love that you offer to us and your support. Thank you, Bishop, for celebrating this liturgy with us. Thank you, Father Brian, Secretary, for being here as well. Thank you to my brother priests, Father Daniel and Father Michael, for being here. Thanks again to Gary Jello, our superintendent of schools, and Mr. Hefner, the Principal of St. Anastasia. Thanks also to our principal, Corey Hero, and our vice principal, Mindy Miller. And thanks to uh, Mrs. Jenny Capeza for organizing this liturgy this morning and for all the work that she does with Alpha. I am truly grateful to all of you for that and thank you for your presence here. And may God bless each of you and have a great day. Thanks. Thank you, Father Tom, and again, thank you and all of the faculty and staff for the outstanding leadership and love uh, that you give, which makes John Carroll High School the best, the best in terms of what we are all about as a a Catholic high school. And again, it was a privilege and a pleasure for me to be with all of you this morning, those here present, as well as joining us by live stream in the school. So it's a pleasure to come to John Carroll High School. And every year on this occasion, I have the tradition of announcing an extra day off And I'm glad to do that this year as well. So there will be an extra day off uh, for the whole student body, faculty and staff at the discretion of the principal and and the president, which is the best one. Uh, We we pray. We pray that there'll be no need for what happened last year and days off from March until the end of uh, the summer. <laughs> at, least, at least I'm praying for that. I hope you are too. But great to see you all this morning and great to have your spirit and enthusiasm. Keep up the great work. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs up me. Can I look in my heart? Let it heal set free. I'm happy to be in you. And I will take it in my hands. Oh, God.
I'm leaving with the reminder that our faith is always bigger than our fear. Right? I think that's a very apropos reminder for this school year in particular. So I think that Mrs. Capeza has some gifts for Bishop back there. So we'll kind of wait for that and then we'll slowly dismiss.